In this lesson, we're going to be factoring x squared plus bx plus c and using factoring to solve real-life problems. Writing a polynomial as a product of factors is called factoring. To factor x squared plus bx plus c as x plus p times the quantity x plus q, you need to find p and q such that p plus q equals b and p times q equals c. And the reason that that works like that is because if you multiply x plus p times the quantity x plus q, you get x squared plus px plus qx plus pq. And then if you factor out a pq from your x terms here, you get the quantity p plus q as the coefficient of x. And if you look right here, I'm going to zoom in. If I rewrite this as x squared plus bx plus c, okay, which we've seen polynomials before like this, and the b is the coefficient of x, and the p plus q is the coefficient of x, and then the c is the constant, and pq is the constant. So that's why right here, we know we need p plus q to equal b, and then p times q to equal c. So going down here, when c is positive, p and q have the same sign as b. Okay? So right here, I have x squared plus 6x plus 5, and the factored form of that is x plus 1 and x plus 5 as my two factors. And then if I have x squared minus 6x plus 5, this becomes x minus 1 as one of my factors, and then x minus 5 as the other factor. In this example, we're going to factor x squared plus 10x plus 16. Okay? If you remember, I need my b value to equal the sum of my two numbers, and I need the c value to equal the product of my two numbers. Those were p and q in the last example. Okay? So I need to find two numbers that add to 10 and multiply to 16. Now, you don't need to write it like this every time. Um, what I usually do is just write okay, b equals 10 and c equals 16. Okay? And then the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to write out your factor pairs, or at least think of your factor pairs. So the pairs of numbers that multiply to 16 are going to be 1 and 16. I'll kind of block this off here. 1 and 16, and then we have 2 and 8, and then I have 4 and 4. Okay? So all these pairs multiply to 16, but I want to see if any of them add to 10. Okay? Well, 1 plus 16 is 17. 2 plus 8, that's 10. So this is going to be our pair. And you can see 4 plus 4 is going to be 8, which is not 10. So my two numbers that these are going to factor out into are going to be 2 and 8. So this right here is going to be factored into x plus 2 and then x plus 8. It's my other factor. Okay? And it doesn't matter what order you have it in because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. Anyway, so this is our answer for example 1. To check your answer, you could always FOIL it out. So I'm going to do that down here. We have x plus 2 times x plus 8. What I should expect to get is my original uh, polynomial right here, x squared plus 10x plus 16. So if I FOIL this out, I get x squared plus 2x plus 8x and plus 16. If I combine my like terms, I get x squared plus 10x plus 16. So this is the original polynomial that we had. So I know that these are my two factors that multiply to x squared plus 10x plus 16. And now I'm done with example one. For this example, we're going to factor x squared minus 8x plus 12. Okay? Well, the first thing we always want to do is write down our b and c values. So b in this case is going to equal negative 8 right here because that's the coefficient of our x term. So negative 8. And c equals positive 12. Okay? So I need two numbers that are going to multiply to 12 and then add to negative 8. Well, if you think about that, two numbers that have to add to be a negative but multiply to be a positive, both of those numbers would have to be negative. That's the only possible way. Okay? So I'm going to make my factor list. So here are my factor pairs to get to 12. Okay, that's how we always want to start with your factors. So 1 times 12 is 12. Then I have 2 times 6 which is 12, and then I have 3 times 4. Those are the only ways to get to 12. And notice that I'm ignoring the sign at first. Okay? I would always recommend ignore the sign and then figuring out the sign after. Okay? Well, both of these have to be negative, so I can just add these and then put the negative on after. Okay? So 1 plus 12 is 13, and if these were both negative, it'd be negative 13, so that's not going to work. 2 plus 6 is 8, 
And if they were both negative, it'd be negative eight. So that is going to work here. And then if you see three plus four is seven and negative seven is not here, we have negative eight. So I know that my two numbers are going to be two and six, but remember they have to be negative. So I'm actually going to erase this box and write in my negatives here. So negative two and negative six. So this is going to be factored into x minus two and x minus six. Okay. So now we're done with example two. Once again, you could FOIL this out to check. I will let you do that on your own. But anyway, now we're done. Factoring x squared plus bx plus c when c is negative. Algebra, x squared plus bx plus c equals x plus p, that quantity, times the quantity x plus q, when p plus q equals b and p times q equals c. When c is negative, p and q have different signs. Okay, so if you see in this one, our c value is negative. So I have x squared minus 4x minus 5 and I have negative five here as one of my values, and I have a positive one here as the other one. So these have different signs. That's all that's saying. In this example, you're gonna factor x squared plus four x minus 21. The first thing we should always do is write down our b value and our c value. So b equals four, and c equals negative 21, okay? So I need two values that add up to positive four and multiply to negative 21. Okay? And because they're multiplying to a negative, the way you multiply to a negative is doing a positive times a negative. So I know that my P and Q values are going to be different. So first thing we should do now is our factor table. I'm going to write our factor pairs. So I have 1 and 21. And notice that I'm ignoring the signs at first. Okay? I'm going to deal with the signs after. After 1 and 21, I have 3 and 7. And those are the only factor pairs to get to 21. So now I need to figure out which one of these pairs I'm going to use, okay? Well, I know that one of my values is going to be negative and the other one's going to be positive, okay? And I see that my B value is positive, okay? So I'm dealing with two numbers. One of them has to be negative, okay? But when I add them, the sum is positive. That means my number with the larger absolute value is going to be the positive number and the smaller absolute value is going to be the negative number, okay? So that means in this case, the 21 is going to be positive and the 1 is going to be negative and the 7 is going to be positive and the 3 is going to be negative, okay? So I have seven minus three, or seven plus negative three, and that does equal four. So this is gonna be our pair, okay? 21 plus negative one would be 20, which is not equal to four. So this is my pair here. Once again, it does not matter what order we write this in, but our factored form of this polynomial is gonna be x minus three times x plus seven, okay? Once again, you could FOIL this out to check to see if you get your original uh, standard form version of this, but now we're done with example three. For example four, a farmer plants a rectangular pumpkin patch in the northeast corner of a square plot of land. The area of the pumpkin patch is 600 square meters. What is the area of the square plot of land? So here's our square plot of land, and I see that from the pumpkin patch to this, I have a length of 40 meters, okay, the entire length is S. And then over here, I have a length of 30 meters, and then this is also S because it's a square. Okay. Well, to figure out the area of the pumpkin patch, which is 600 square meters in terms of S, I can rewrite this side right here as S and then minus this 40. Okay, so this is going to be S minus 40 meters. And then this one right here is going to be this entire length S and then minus this 30 to get here. So this is going to be S minus 30, okay? Well, I know the area of this is gonna be 600, right? It says right here, the area of the pumpkin patch is 600 square meters. Well, I also know that it is gonna be the product of this side length and this side length. So if I multiply this side length by this side length and then set it equal to 600 square meters, I can find S, and that's gonna be helpful to answer this question, what is the area of the square plot of land, okay? So anyway, I'm gonna set that up. If I have S minus 40 times S minus 30, okay, well, I know that that is gonna be equal to 600, okay? Now, I'm just gonna multiply this out, okay? So if I FOIL this out, I get S times S, which is S squared, and then S times negative 30, negative 30 S, negative 40 times S, negative 40 S, then negative 40 times negative 30, which is positive 1,200 and that equals 600. Well, 
the way that I'm going to solve this equation is I want to get everything on the left side and have the right side equal to zero and then see if I can factor my polynomial and then use the zero product property in order to solve my equation. So first thing I'm going to do is simplify this. Okay, so negative 30s and negative 40s are like terms. That's going to become s squared minus 70s. And then I see I can also get rid of this 600 on the right side by subtracting it on both sides. I do 600. Then this plus 1200 is going to become plus 600. And now this is going to equal zero. All right, so I got one of my sides of the equation to equal zero, which is what I want. Okay? The next thing I need to do in order to get myself to use the zero product property is to factor this. Okay? Well, we've just done some examples factoring, and the two things I need to know are my B value and my C value. Okay? So over here, I'm going to write down my B value. B is equal to negative 70. C equals 600. Okay? Well, if you look at 600, 600 has a lot of factor pairs. Okay? So you could write every single one of them out, or you could just try to think of some that might work. Okay? We're looking for two numbers that multiply to positive 600 and add to negative 70. Okay? So once again, you could make a list, but that would take a while. I'm just going to think of some numbers. Well, I know that 60 times 10 is 600. And, well, 60 plus 10 is positive 70. But if I used negative 60 and negative 10, they would add to negative 70. And negative 60 times negative 10 is positive 600. So those are actually going to be my values. Okay, So it's going to be negative 60 and negative 10. So I can factor this thing out into s minus 60 and then s minus 10. And now that's equal to 0. Once again, you can always foil this out to double check to see if you're right. Okay, S times S is S squared, negative 60S, and then we have a negative 10S. That's going to get us to our negative 70S. And then negative 60 times negative 10 gives me positive 600. Okay, so I know that I have factored this properly. Now I'm going to use the zero product property, like I mentioned earlier, to find my S values. Well, this is going to be S minus 60 equals zero, or S minus 10 equals zero. If I add 60 and add 10... I get s equals 10, and my other value is going to be s equals 60. Okay, But I see that I have two values here, and obviously there's only one value for s. You can't have a square that has two values at the same time. So I need to just see which one of these is going to work. So let me just put a box around them first, actually. Well, I'm looking here. Given this diagram, s is clearly longer than 40 meters and it's longer than 30 meters, because 30 meters makes up part of this S. So my 10 meters here that I solve for, this solution is not going to work. So I'm going to reject this, and we're only going to use this one. Okay, So this S equals 60 meters. But we're not done. If you look back over to the question, it says, what is the area of the square plot of land? Okay, Well, that area is just going to be the side length squared, or the side length times the side length. So if I go down here, area equals side length squared, my area is going to be 60 and then squared, 60 meters squared, which equals 3,600 square meters. Okay, And that is our answer for example four. And now we're done.